Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm awful darn glad you're with me today. Why am I glad you're with me? Because you're with me. And I think that that is a wonderful thing. To have you right here live with me on the 5th day of February 2014. It is 8 a.m. Eastern here in Detroit, Michigan. And guess what? It snowed last night. And it's windier than the dickens out there. I'm looking outside expecting to see monkeys go flying by and everything else. Of course, there are not. But it is windy, it is cold, it is breezy, but you know what, it's winter. If this was June, I'd be more than just a little cheesed off, but it's not. So that's okay, I'm grateful. See, you can even have yourself an attitude of gratitude when it is looking as funky as Mother Nature's got it looking out there. But I'm grateful not only for the weather happening in winter as opposed to in summer, I'm also grateful for this wonderful music in the background. David Martinka, thank you so much. Sun Shadows, thank you so much. Find the music of these award-winning artists at www.redbellymusic.com and www.sunshadows.net. We hope that you look them up and you really, really enjoy finding out more about great music. As I've said before, I've got three of their CDs. I think they're fabulous. So we are definitely living every minute with an attitude of gratitude. And today in the program, it was funny. When I set out to do this program, it was basing it on something that I've been doing for the last few days that came out of nowhere, but it came, but it has a beginning, right? All good stories come out of nowhere, but they have a beginning. And if they're really, really good, they don't have that, that quick of an end, I think. But. So the deal was, years ago, back in 2006, I had had a slip and fall in my home. I don't even like to say an accident. It was a slip and fall. That's exactly what happened. <clears throat> and when it all shook out, I couldn't walk. And I was thinking, hey, what's up with this? So I went through a a big process of learning how to walk again. There's a lot of physical therapy involved, and I did learn how to walk again. And I have a trusty um, companion, my guide dog, my walker, that follows me everywhere I go. Or Actually, I follow it. I hold on to it. It leads, I walk. It leads, I walk. It's kind of fun. But there was a couple things that had happened early on that every now and then happened today. And it was kind of a weird thing because... I had gotten out of the car. I had a, I had a live-in companion for a while. <clears throat> Nobody wanted me to live alone. And, in fact, when I couldn't walk, I couldn't live alone because I couldn't take care of my cat. I couldn't even take care of myself. So I was grateful that friends, family, neighbors pitched in. I mean, there, was n- there wasn't a need I had that was not met in any way, shape, or form. But the only thing I could do for myself was work. So I worked and supported everybody, and they took care of me. So it was kind of cool. So long story short, I'm getting out of the car one day. I had gone to the grocery store with uh, my companion, my uh, caregiver. And she gets out of the van and goes ripping right up. I had this um, beautiful, um, I had, when I left that house, eventually I had a beautiful, I can't even think of what it is, ramp. Hello, radio. This beautiful ramp to use. But at the time, I had not had the ramp, and I was still finding my way up and down those stairs. I had these three stairs that led up to my front door. And I got out of the car, and I couldn't move. The pain was excruciating, could not move. And she could see that. And she, I was, you know, kind of like, oh, man. So I just stood there. And she's hauling all the groceries in. Don't worry, Annette, I'll get them, I'll get them. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, Loretta, that's great, thank you. <clears throat> so she gets all the groceries in and turns, and I'm right behind her. And she's, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you get from there to here in the time it took me to grab these bags and walk into the house? And I come back to grab more bags, and you're right there. And I said, I don't know. I just started thinking about wonderful things, and suddenly my knees unlocked or whatever, and I could move, I could walk. And the title of the show today is Living Every Minute in an Attitude of Gratitude. Even though I think I screwed up on on some of the publicity and put with an attitude of gratitude, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. What got me through that pain, and let me tell you something, that pain was enough to send me reaching for if I drank a bourbon bottle because that was kind of crazy. What I started to do was think about all the things that I was experiencing right there in front of me that I was grateful for. So I was grateful for the blue sky. I was grateful for the lawn. 
I was grateful for my van. I was grateful for the walker. I was grateful, it's, you know, fill in the blank. And I kept feeling it as I said it. I would smile and I would, I would get into the gratitude of being so blessed that I could barely stand myself. I mean, it was just like, wow, this is incredible. And then the cool thing was that as that energy went on and on, it was like I didn't even know I had a problem with my leg. I didn't even know that I was in all this pain. I didn't even know that I couldn't walk up that flight of stairs. Three little stairs, but a flight of stairs. And I walked right up and was standing there on the on the screened in porch and she came out and looked at me, you know, like I said, What are you doing here? How'd you get here? I said, I walked. You did not. You could barely move. I saw you. How did you do that? Attitude of gratitude, folks. And I joke you not. So when I say <clears throat> what I was doing for the last few days was wrapped around something that actually happened years ago, this is what was going on. As as many of you <laughs> who listen on a regular basis, and I'm so glad you do. Please bring friends and come back each and every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Eastern, and listen to this show and have fun with me. Anyway, we've had just this crazy, crazy stuff going on here at the house since New Year's Eve, which was the day before my very first Attitude of Gratitude show. And we've had repair people in here. We've had the plumbing redone. We've had the refrigerator didn't work for like three weeks. We had another one. That's okay. But the, the main one on the main level didn't work. And what else? The gas leaks. Oh, my, it, was just, it was just a huge, huge bunch of fun going on here. So something was going on, and it kind of bothered me. I, I was nervous about something. And wouldn't you know, the thing I was nervous about kicked yesterday, the furnace. Yep, absolutely. Repair people are on their way today, but yep. It, it's hey, it's all good, right? Because it's it's all covered, and we're grateful as the Dickens. But as I was walking from my office living room area to my bathroom, I was nervous about what I was hearing, right? And it was the sound of the of the of the furnace being kind of funky. And I realized if I kept giving in to that fear about what could happen to the furnace. I wouldn't be able to walk again because I would be paralyzed by that fear. Not I mean not be able to walk because my legs hurt or not be able to walk because of whatever, but I mean literally because I would have been stuck in this fear. So I decided that I was going to get into a higher vibration, a greater energy, feel better about it, and I started right from there and I said, I am so grateful for this sturdy walker. I am so grateful for this beautiful floor. I am so grateful for my gorgeous walls. I'm so grateful for my perfect living space. I'm so grateful for this. And everywhere I stepped, no matter what I looked at, I found something I could be grateful for. And and I happen to be one of these people that has some of my walls just covered with artwork. So trust me, almost everywhere I look, I have something I'm looking at to be grateful for. And by the time I got to my destination and was in and all settled and doing whatever it was I needed to do there, I had such a feeling of peace that it didn't matter to me, didn't matter to me at all what was going on, didn't matter what was happening, I was at peace. Now, did the attitude of gratitude fix my furnace at that point? No. There's going to be a repair person that's going to come fix the furnace, so it's okay. But it fixed me. And I then thought, I was going to say I deduced, and I thought, who am I, Sherlock Holmes? I'm deducing things here. I deduced that if I were to move through the rest of my day with this attitude of gratitude for every single thing I did, I'm grateful, that my, I'm grateful for these fingers that hold on to this walker. I'm grateful for this doorknob that I can open so it allows me to go into the next room. I'm grateful for that I walked around that whole day. Now, you've got to realize once my sister leaves for work in the morning, I'm generally here alone, me and these two cats. And they don't, they're not chatty. They don't show up and say, hey, Annette, what's going on? So it's me and myself and I. And I literally, from the moment I would start moving, I would start saying, I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful. And I kept, in that moment, I went out to make lunch. I'm grateful for these carrots. I'm so grateful for this frying pan. I'm so grateful for this knife and fork. And I kept doing it. And do you know that I couldn't feel badly. I couldn't feel blue. I couldn't feel bummed out. There was nothing that I felt except complete and utter happiness. 
living every minute, experiencing every minute with an attitude of gratitude. Now, how stinking cool is that? Really? Seriously? Now, guys, I didn't invent the wheel. I'm not even reinventing the wheel. I'm just reminding you the wheel is here. I am not anybody that created an attitude of gratitude. I am not somebody that suddenly came up with this formula, you know, that says, hey, guess what, try this, and, you know, you'll be regular for the next 30 days. And I'm telling you what, it is so natural, and it is so normal, and it is so amazing. And, and, I, and I say this, anybody's got little kids, around little kids, raise your hands. Okay, I see two hands. No, I really don't see any hands, but I'm, I'm saying I do. I see how these hands go up. If you're around little kids, what I just did is a natural occurrence in their life. Why? Watch a little kid just sitting there on the sidewalk, and they're playing with what seems like nothing. And you walk over, and if you can sit down on the ground next to them, I wholeheartedly suggest you do, because it could be a lot of fun. And you're talking to that little kid, and you're like, hey, little kid, what's going on? Or maybe you know the child's name, and you're like, hey, name of child, what's going on? And the little kid says, I'm watching the ants. (laughs) <laughs> really? <laughs> You're watching the ants. Say, well, I'm an ant. No, I'm watching those ants. Now, it took, you know, may take you a second to look down and realize there's those little teeny tiny black ants on the sidewalk. <clears throat> okay. So you, you give in for about, what, 20 seconds? They say a child's attention span is short. You no, know, be an adult around a kid. You're the one with the short attention span. Trust me on this. So you're sitting there looking at this little kid, looking at these ants, and you're saying to yourself, what is the fascination about the ants. Well, let me tell you, my friend, you're thinking too much. You are thinking way too much. That kid is so grateful that they've got those ants to look at because they don't understand the ants, but they're appreciating the ants. And they've got this feeling of appreciation inside them that says, those are cool. Those little ants are cool. And they don't touch them. They don't squish them. They don't mess them. They just watch them. And ants are just doing ant things. I don't know what they're doing. I don't see any malls. I don't see any swing sets in the backyard. The ants are just doing ant stuff. But that kid is totally engrossed in those ants, and, and, that, and that child feels that connection with those ants. And in that moment, that child is living in an attitude of gratitude. Even if they don't have anything to play with, they can chill out with those ants. Even if they've got an entire backyard full of swing sets and monkey bars and turtle sandboxes and whatever else, they are one with those ants at that moment. And their level of gratitude, their level of peace, their level of love is what the Dalai Lama tells us is the true religion, which is love. So when you think about it, if you could get yourself into getting out of your adult, I got to do's, I got to do's, getting out of the, oh my gosh, my life's got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to run here and run there. And let's just say from the minute you walk out of the door of your house to you get to your vehicle, whether that's in your garage or that's outside, You are grateful for every single thing you do. Even if what you say to yourself is, I'm so grateful I took this step. I'm so grateful I took this step. I'm so, try it. You've got nothing to lose. I think you're going to be totally in a by what happens when you really do choose to live every minute in an attitude of gratitude. I got the chills just thinking about it. And I also get the chills when I hear the absolutely fabulous, fabulous music that my friend David Martinka composed for this program. He is a member of the group Sun Shadows. You can find Sun Shadows at sunshadows.net and David at redbellymusic.com. You can find me, hello, you can find me at Perspective Hour here on Talk. I would love for you to come along and join me and follow me. Annette Rochelle Aben, I'm on Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube. The video for this show will appear on YouTube at some point later on today because I make it my point to make sure that show appears at some point on YouTube. So go ahead and hang out with all of that. Lots of other wonderful things coming your way. Remember to become part of Blog Talk Radio, PerspectivePower.com, or BlogTalk.com, Perspective Power. I knew I'd get that right at some point. And that way you can stay up on all the latest things that are happening with me. And I am so glad that you have been with me today. It's been a lot of fun because I am living every minute in attitude, gratitude, 